Hello, I'm Dr. John Rijo Patan, junior resident at Ashwini Rural Medical College, Kumbhari. I'm presenting a paper on role of MRI imaging in the evaluation of perianal fistulas under the guidance of Dr. Jyoti Dapadia, Professor at HOD, and Dr. Swarup Kakani, senior resident. So, perianal fistula is an inflammatory condition that affects the region around the anal canal and causes significant morbidity. The prevalence is around 0.01%. It commonly affects young males. Conventional fistulography involves use of X-rays, the use of CT scan, anal endosonography, but X-ray fistulography has low accuracy. CT fistulography involves substantial radiation and exposure. Anal endosonography depends upon the user skills and anatomic technical restrictions of the core. So, MRI fistulogram has evolved as a reliable imaging technique. It helps in providing precise information on the anatomy of the anal canal, the anal so complex, the relationship of fistula to the pelvic floor structures. So, as compared to conventional fistulography, MR allows the precise definition of the fistula tract, identification of secondary fistula abscess. That's now the gold standard modality. The aims and objectives of the study is to define the role of MRI in evaluation of the perianal fistulas. Diagnosis of the perianal fistulas identifies secondary extensions and ramifications, grading of the perianal fistulas for better preoperative evaluation and reduce the postoperative recurrences. Study setting with tertiary healthcare center, study design with descriptor. We informed written consent. A 1.5 Tesla G MRI machine was used at our center. This is a retrospective observation study. 80 patients were taken as a sample size. Three plane images were used. Fat suppressors T1 weighted and T2 weighted images were taken. In the p-value less than 0.05 was taken statistically significant. The study population being all the patients that were referred to our radiology department for MRI fistula slogram on clinical suspicion of perianal fistula. Study duration being 12 months. Selection criteria being inclusion. All the consenting adults undergo MRI fistula on clinical suspicion of perianal fistula. Exclusion criteria are those who didn't give the consent or those who had relative or absolute contraindications for the MRI study. Normal perianal anatomy we see the representative diagram. There's the internal spinster, the external spinster, the interspinsteric space, and the external fossa. This is the actual section. Then in females, we, we have the urethra, vagina, posterior, the anal canal, the internal spinster, the interspinster space, the external spinster. Normal perianal in perianal anatomy in coronal section, the rectum, the anal canal, the internal spinster, the levator ana, the external spinster, and the interspinsteric space. Technique used, three plane images were used. All the patients were imaged in supine position. Classification system, parts classification follows surgical classification in coronal plane, where St. James University classification involves axial plane, and we have adhered to that in this study. It is the radiological classification using MRI shape. So, parts classification, as said, gives four types of fistulas. First is the interspinsteric fistula, then second is the transpinsteric fistula, third is the so, prospinsteric fistula and four is the extra spinsteric. Key stone here is the external spinster. Well, what we usually follow is the St. James University classification system. It is based on the actual plane. It integrates the MRI findings and surgical landmarks. It gives, it gives five types of fistulas. The first one is the simple linear interspinsteric fistula given here. The second is the interspinsteric fistula with an abscess. Third is the transpinsteric fistula, and fourth is the transpinsteric fistula with an abscess, and fifth is the supralevator or the translevator with an extinction. So, this is a grade one simple linear fistula, as we see here in the coronal view here. These are the cases that presented with the grade one fistula presenting with perianal discharge. Actual cases that came here, the zoomed images of the grade one fistula. Presenting with perianal discharge, having grade one fistula, more patients we have here. There's a grade two interspinsteric fistula with an abscess. As we see the abscess here, in the coronal view, the abscess is seen. These are the different cases that presented with perianal discharge and found to have grade two fistula, as marked by the arrows here in the actual and coronal fistula. Zoomed in images here, we see. Then another patient presenting with perianal pain having grade 2 fistula. This is a grade 3 fistula, transpinsteric fistula in the axial view, crossing both the internal and the external fistula. In the coronal plane, we see this is the actual patient that presented with perianal discharge having grade 3 fistula, as we see in the arrow mount here, axial sections. 
zoomed in images in the quad T2 images. Then trans inspiric fistula with an abscess is grade 4. See the abscess and it is causing both the fistulas as is seen in the images. This is the coronal view of the grade 4. The actual cases that came to our tertiary care center, grade 4 fistula. Zoomed in images in the coronal section. T2 stress gives a better delineation. Actual T2 fat suppress sequences here and core T2. There's actual patient having showing grade 4 fistula here, marked by the arrows, and then the patients with grade 4 fistula. So transfistulic fistulas are more common. Grade 5 fistula is a super uh, supra elevator, elevator and trans elevator disease. As we see, it extends upwards. And the image here, then the coronal section better made out. There's a levator and I'm still crossing it. So it's supra elevator. elevator. It ca can cause horseshoe abscess as well, as we see here in the T2 slow images. Actual patient that came with severe peri NLP. In coronal and in axial section, we can see this is the axial section, the horseshoe abscess here. The stir images we can see and the fat suppressed images showing the horseshoe abscess, the grade 5 fistula. The zoomed in images showing the grade 5 fistula, there's the sagittal view showing the grade 5 fistula. So whenever we are marking the annual fistula, we have to locate it in the, first in the quadrant wise, then in the annual clockwise, following uh, when the patient is in the supine lithotomic position to better locate the fistula. Three points must to have in the radiological reports the internal uh, opening a description where it is opening in the lumen, the course, its relationship with the internal and the external anal space to the secondary associated or tracks or extension and the external opening. Some mimics are there which may be clinically present as perianal fistula, but on imaging, we can find it out that it's a mimic like pyelonidal sinus or anal fistula or tractitis. We had a patient who presented similar complaints, but on imaging, we found that it's not perianal fistula, but as the arrow mark shows, it's a pyelonidal sinus. So the analysis of the study was 80 patients were screened, 81, 8, 61 were males and 19 were females. So 1 is to 3, 0.3 ratio male shows male predisposition. Mean age was around 40 for males and 43 for females. So young patients are more affected, most common presenting symptoms, perianal discharge and perianal pain. Most common type, as I already said, is transcensific fistula grade 3 and rare ones are extra sensitive or super sensitive type. This Accuracy of MRI was supposed to be excellent. It was 96%. And the discussion part, as we discussed, it's an MRI fistula. We have a distinct advantage with better soft tissue resolution, better delineation of the secondary tracts and depiction of the transneural inflammatory process. The most sensitive sequence has been T2-weighted images followed by T2-weighted fat suppressed sequences. This is the pictorial depiction. Male predisposition, common is grade 3 types. The presenting is more common in perianal discharge and perianal pain. So conclude, we can see that MR is a gold standard now. It's non-invasive, no radiation exposure, precisely defines the fistulas and all the extension, ramification, inflammations. These are the references we had for the study. Thank you.